In our last lesson, we learned that a particle of mass little m outside a spherical shell of mass capital M, the gravitational force, we can treat it as if all the mass capital M is located at its center. So that was the first part of Newton's shell theorem. There is a second part, however, that says a uniform shell of matter exerts no net gravitational force on a particle located inside of it. So here we have a shell of mass, and we pick a point, some random location, uh, inside the shell. It doesn't matter where inside the shell we choose the sum of the forces of gravity from all this mass that surround little m add to zero. And like I said, if you want a copy of this, I will share it with you. Okay, but what is this? what does this allow us to do? What does this tell us? Let's assume we dig a very deep hole in the earth. So now we have gone from the radius of the earth down to some new radius, small r. Okay, so we're going to assume that the earth is spherical and of uniform density for this example. So if you see, if I'm located at this point, I am now inside a shell that is denoted by, I'm going to shade it in here. That shell is outside me, so the sum of all the gravitational forces from all this mass of that shell is zero. And then you can treat it as if I'm standing on a planet, a new planet, that has this radius little r and mass of this amount. And then my force of gravity at that location would be g my mass times the mass of the inner sphere divided by little r squared. So let's call this mass of this inside part, I'll label it ins for inside. And so I know the force of gravity acting me at this spot would be determined by this equation. But how do I figure out what that mass is? It's not like I can put it on a scale and weigh it. No, so let's get this mass in terms of density and radius, little r. So I know the mass of what's inside is equal to the density. We're, remember, we're assuming constant density times the volume of that inside piece, okay? And I know that's rho, that's the Greek letter rho, which stands for density. The volume of a sphere, we know, is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay? All right, so I'm going to take this expression right here and substitute it in right there. And that will give me... And there... Now this is numbers that I can probably have access to. I know I have to figure out what is the radius of that inside sphere that I'm located on the outside of, and then I have to know the density of the planet and assume uniform density. I know my mass, and we know the gravitational constant. So now that's something I can solve. Now if you notice, for planet Earth, or for any planet where the density is uniform, this part right here can be treated as a constant. So if you look at that, f times a constant times a distance, that's like Hooke's law, right? f equals kx, f equals a constant times a displacement. So if, if I took a spring and I stretched it a distance x and then let it go, it would oscillate back and forth with simple harmonic motion, which is what our next chapter is about. So if you're wondering what that is, don't worry, that's what we're studying next. So that leads to a very interesting hypothetical situation. If I drilled a hole in the earth all the way through to the other side and I jumped into it, I would accelerate down the hole. But of course, as I neared the center, my acceleration would decrease. I'm still accelerating, but the magnitude of my acceleration decreases until at the center I would be weightless, but I'd be moving with tremendous velocity. And then once I pass the center, it'd be like I'm going up 
and I'd be slowing down until I got back to the other side where my velocity would run out and then I would fall back down the hole and I would oscillate back and forth through the center of the earth. 